Hello everyone. I just wanted to do a quick follow up on the previous session. So let's go back to our VS Code and let's start with type inclusion. So as I mentioned earlier, when you do type inclusion, what happens is that user not found record becomes a subtype of not found record. So this relationship is somewhat similar to the relationship we have between superclass and subclass in double OP. Just to prove that point, let's quickly replace this with not found record and save it. And let's rerun run the service. In the meantime, let's open this file. Okay, so if I send the request now, I get the same response. So that leads to the question, why do we actually need to do this? The reason for that is when you create a subtype, you can actually include additional information. For instance, in this case, I have mentioned that the body is uh, another record and the record name is error details. So when you add this additional information and generate the open API spec, you can generate, a, generate an accurate open API spec. That open API spec can be used to generate a client stuff. Client stuff is used in the consumer program to consume this API. We all know that when you have a good client stuff, it improves the consumers of this API's use experience. So that's why we recommend you to always create a subtype when you write this API's using Ballerina. The other thing I just wanted to discuss is that, say you want to send 400 bad request back to the client in this case. So then what you can do is you can just add that request record here. And then now if you send a request, before that let's rerun the service. Let me open that file again. We just need to send an invalid user. So let me change the user ID to two. All right, so now if I send the request, now I get 400 bad requests instead of 404 not found. So that's how you can change the response status code as you want. So let me go back and change it to not found. Right. All right, the other thing I just wanted to discuss is that when you hit run here, you can see the terminal and in the terminal, you can see there are a bunch of hints. What these hints are saying is this particular service is not safe to run concurrently. Therefore, the listener will not dispatch request concurrently. The reason for that is this table. This table is a shared variable, so you need to use logs before you use it concurrently. I'm not going to show how to do that because it is beyond the scope of this session. So I'll skip that for now. The other thing I just wanted to discuss is instead of using this run button, what you can do is you can just to bad run and it will simply run the service. So when you do bad run, actually when you hit run here, what happens is that it, it actually runs bad run command. So when you do bad run, what happens is that it builds the service and then it runs the service. Instead, if you want, you can just build the service using bad build.
and then uh, using the generated artifact you can just execute the run okay it's generating executable okay so this is the generated executable so as you guys might know the generated executable is a jar file so you can just then run that jar file okay so if you want to build a native executable you can actually do that also in that case you can uh, you just have to install uh, graal vm and then you can say uh, build native i'm not going to do that now but i would strongly suggest you to try that out it is quite interesting okay so that's all i just wanted to discuss in this session see you all